All right, I just wanted to briefly discuss the Mill novels with you. You've got this really great website that um, you can look through. It's not too um, extensive, so kind of nice and and how succinct it is. It has a good definition there um, of a cinema novel. It's got a handful of characteristics of the sentimental novels. And then it's got um, some of the key authors. But I, did, I just wanted to give you a little bit of context to kind of situate that. So um, let's see. In terms of a definition, uh, the the reason these are called sentimental novels is because they, they're supposed to like play with your emotions and, and you're supposed to like cry a lot and and feel you know just all the feelings it's like every hallmark movie and you know like a, like a whole bunch of them all at once um and this is why they're called cinema novels which is also why they're often dismissed um they are formulaic so that's part of why they're dismissed i, I think we could also argue they're dismissed because they're written by women and they're read by women mostly um, although there is evidence that men would read these books too. We can look at who's checking them out and you can look at marginalia. Um, and there have been some scholars who have, you know, made some pretty, uh, good, um, provide pretty good evidence that men read these novels too, even though it's mostly, um, women that are reading them and women that are writing them. Um, again, these novels are hugely, hugely popular. The phrase you have in your, um, outline and in your lecture is a damned mob of scribbling women and that comes from Nathaniel Hawthorne you you might you might not recognize his name but I bet you recognize the book he wrote the Scarlet Letter um, that said I bet none of you have probably heard of the book by Maria Cummings called the lamplighter um, this book her book the lamplighter sold in the first four weeks it was released sold three times as more copies uh, than the Scarlet Letter sold over the course of Hawthorne's whole life. Like, think about that for a moment. Not double, but three times as more just in the first four weeks that it was released than Hawthorne sold over his whole lifetime. So these are the books that people are reading. Um, and these books, they, they do tend to follow a, uh, a formula. Um, oftentimes it's a young girl She's uh, lost one or usually both for parents. She might be living with, you know, usually the, uh, it's usually like a mean stepmother or a mean aunt or somebody. There's always some mean person, which tends to be an older woman. Um, this plays into so many stereotypes. It's like so many kind of Disney movies too. Um, so uh, th throughout the novel though, even though it starts off with all this tragedy and and what have you throughout the novel she like triumphs she like does all this stuff and she, she, she usually is doing this on her own like the the world is letting her down the men in her life are you know not rising to the occasion of the call to domesticity she's just doing it all on her own um it always though ends with her getting married right so it's like every again back to disney it's like every disney movie before like brave or frozen, right? It's always gonna, you're gonna have these strong women, but they're always gonna get married at the end. And again, that's okay, they can get married, but the, it, the way it's set up in these stories is that that should be their ultimate goal and that they should um, somehow um, let go of any, any identity they created outside of that, that now this is their identity. Um, since that's the, you know, the, the, the conclusion and, you know, how it should end. Now, there are a couple of books in this period that challenge that idea. So one of them is Fanny Fern. Uh, she wrote a book called Ruth Hall. And her book, Ruth Hall, what was interesting about that one, some of these, many of these books are semi-autobiographical. And in that book, uh, a woman, it's a woman on her own. I can't, her husband dies. I can't remember. I think also... Uh, some of her children die. She's left with at least one child that survives. I can't remember all the details, but um, again, triumphs, does her thing. She actually, at the end of that book, she doesn't get married, which again, isn't typical for these novels. And what's interesting is in real life, the author, um, and by the way, Fanny Fern isn't actually her name. Many of these women use pen names. Um, she got married, right? Because again, you know, as we noted in the last lecture, um, if you want to survive, you really just have to get married in the 19th century. Um, 
So that's kind of an interesting uh, book because it's going to end a little differently than the rest of them do. And then again, in her real life, she actually did get remarried. Another one that I, I recommend to you all is Little Women by Louise May Alcott. Um, this one, uh, also semi-autobiographical. And if you haven't seen the most recent film from 2019, I so recommend it. It's so good. Um, it does, it tells the story of Little Women, but then it also gives a little bit of Louise May Alcott's life too. Um, again, since it was semi-autobiographical. And, um, you know, if you, the way that book ends, it ends with Joe, who is the um, character that's modeled off of Louise Malcott. It ends with her getting married. But that book is actually divided into two parts. And she originally published it. When it was originally published, the first part um, was the original book, and that's where it ended. And in that book, Joe did not get married. And she didn't want Joe to get married because she's Joe, and she didn't get married. Um, but, like, her readers were like, oh. <gasps> Joe has to get married. How can Joe not be married? The editors are like, Joe has to get married. How can Joe not get married? So she like kind of bowed to pressure and had Joe get married. She uh, sort of felt though that by having Joe marry the professor, it was kind of a more like intellectual uh, marriage and arrangement. So she kind of felt like she could, um, I don't know, like accept that, right, in, in another way. Um, so I think that is everything I wanted to tell you about um, cinema fiction. One thing I, had, I did just note right now in reference to Fanny, Her Fanny Fern is that many of these women did use pseudonyms. Um, and that was because, again, it's like not wholly proper for women to be doing these things. Um, and, you know, there's still, it's still happening even in the, 20th century, right? So um, if you ever read the the book, The Outsiders, um, she wrote with a pseudonym, um, or I guess I shouldn't say a pseudonym. She used her initials, right? Um, and so that way it wasn't as evident that um, this was a woman who was writing a book that might appeal to like both boys and girls. Um, so if women are having to do this in the 20th century, then it's uh, probably maybe not so surprising that they're having to do it in the 19th century too. All right. I hope you're doing well. If you have any questions, be sure and send me an email. Put those in our, we've got that discussion board that stays up throughout the semester. Um, take care. Bye-bye.